Live from London, it's Plank of the Week with Mike Graham. That's what I would say if I were you. <laughs> Welcome to another fantastic edition, a brand new Plank of the Week. Here we are uh, in TV land and I'm hoping uh, there's going to be much plankery to go around. There's all sorts of people to talk about. I mean, midst of uh, what we can only describe as yet another economic crisis, there's got to be some people to answer for it, haven't there? Surely. Could it be politicians? Could it be sports stars? Could it be organisations? It could be all manner of things. I've got an expanded panel to help me uh, bring all the plankery to the real world and to bring it straight to you uh, into your living rooms. It is one and only Kevin O'Sullivan. He's with us today. Uh, we've got Reem Ibrahim as well. Uh, Renny Hunderkamp, the doctor, is in the house. And also Mr Richard Tice, the leader of the Reform UK party. Now, this, my friends, is exactly what they are all playing for. I don't mean the people who are here. I mean the people who are out there uh, who are going to be accused of being plank of the week. Let's get it started straight away. Kevin O'Sullivan, who's your first nominee? Uh, Transport for London, now that's the organisation that runs the tubes and the buses uh, across the capital city, run by that fantastic mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, <laughs> What's his name Ferrita again? <laughs> his name escapes me. Yeah, Ferrita Anyway, Ferrita. they have brought in more Orwellian language control. We've got to be careful about this stuff. So they put out this uh, advisory text to all staff saying uh, they're not allowed to use the word accident because that might offend what? people. <laughs> what? So instead they have to use the word collision, which doesn't mean, <laughs> doesn't mean the same thing. No. They're not allowed to use the word elderly because that might offend. They have to use the word older. Older does not mean old. No. You can be four years old and <laughs> older than someone who's three years old. <laughs> so this is imprecision in language. This is not only restricting the words we're allowed to use, it is uh, uh, making the language less precise, less exact, and that's what I hate about it. Yeah. And the, re the reason they do all of this is to cut out political discourse. So only a couple of weeks ago, the local government association uh, banned words like mm. uh, second-class citizen, economic migrant, uh, low-skilled workers, uh, deprived neighbourhoods. They banned those words. So why do they ban them? So that we can't discuss them. Uh, what about if I want to talk about economic migrants or if I'm on a tube train and I want to say the word accident, I'm not allowed well, to. Well, what if you've had an accident? This, this is how they control us. This is how they control us. And we've got to fight back. Every time we get one of these advisories from somebody like TfL or the local government associ association, what we have to do is turn around and tell them to do one and yeah. ignore it. We do. We absolutely do. But the young people of these days are so apathetic about everything that they yeah. get, oh, well, you know, it's not too bad. I Hold on, Renee, not all of us. I'm sorry, Not all of us. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> many. You stick up, what, stick up of... for some young people with sense, will you? I will. A lot of us actually think this is all, you know, a complete load of crap. I mean, seriously, we're thinking about this sort of snowflakery. The real world does not come with a trigger warning, and I don't really understand why we want to continuously mm. restrict our freedom of expression. Interestingly, uh, one of the words that the local government association banned was youngsters. <laughs> I have no idea why. But what is who, it, though? Who comes up with this? Exactly. Well, well, yeah, it's well, a good question. Well, what sure. worries me is you can imagine the committees of about ten of them sitting round for days on end, mm. dreaming up this garbage, mm. absolute garbage, at our expense because yeah. they're well, basically paid for by the but tax. But it's illiterate as well, as I say. Older, it does not mean old. Uh, elderly does mean old. So it's illiterate and it is ruining the precision of language it and it's for all for a political purpose and I think we all have to rail against it and tell all these people to just go away <laughs> and it, just ignore I mean, them. I've seen signs on the underground recently which are ludicrous. There's one uh, that sits at the bottom of the, uh, the escalators mm. at London Bridge, you know, unwanted touching is sexual harassment. Oh, really? You think? <laughs> I wasn't really planning on unwanted touching. I was just taking the train from point A what to point B. What about wanted touching? And wanted touching is all right, it's apparently. It's conceptual. But it's a question of whether you can communicate and, and that it's while you're it... actually riding on a train before the accident <laughs> happens. You know, Have you obviously. noticed on lots of the, uh, the steps now on the tube and on the platforms and the, the, the stations, you're on a staircase, so clearly you're on steps, and it says, please mind the step. Yeah. <laughs> on every other step, and, and, there's and, a sticker. And, and, uh, and uh, d <clears throat> don't uh, run down the escalators. They, they kind of got the idea that unless they tell us in an announcement that we'll do acrobatics on the escalators. <laughs> it, it, the, the amount of uh, announcements they make are just extraordinary. The only time they don't announce anything is when a train stops for 10 minutes. Then, then they don't tell yes. you why. It's <laughs> just they might outrageous. Have, they might as well have a sign that says, you know, don't attempt any motorcycle uh, shenanigans. Don't bring your motorbike down the escalator. 
calculator. Yeah. You know, I mean, Biggie, you might as well just dream anything up. You know, please do not drive inside yeah. the station platform yeah. in your car. Please, so, don't, please yeah. don't fall when drunk. No. Yeah. So the train stopped for 10 minutes, maybe because it's had an accident, but you're not allowed to use the word accident. I was on one coming to this studio today and it broke down for about 10 minutes and they, we had to get another train. There was no announcement for nine minutes, but they were busy telling us, you know, see it, say it, sorted. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> These mean people anything. are morons. They must be expunged. Oh, Absolutely God. right. Dr Renee, you've got the next one. I have. So I want to talk about King Charles. And, yes. you know, when the late Queen passed away, I was actually quite surprised at how Charles handled it and I was pleasantly surprised. But now I've had enough. I've decided he's been absolutely ridiculous. So the King Charles, who wants to be in touch with everyday people in a cost of living crisis, wants to cut down on pomp and circumstance. He's going to make 100 people redundant from Clarence House. Camilla's got rid of her ladies in waiting. And Charles thinks that he's going to appeal to the masses by, as Kev said earlier, not inviting 8,000 people to the coronation, but only 2,000. And that they're all <laughs> going to go, oh, it's wonderful, he's saving so much money. I think it's been ridiculous. What do we have a monarch for, Mike? if it's not for pomp. Yeah. That's what people yeah, love about this country. not much use for anything else, is it? Not much yeah. use for anything else. Surely the Queen's passing showed the world that people love all yeah, of the, the pomp. Yeah. You know, one of the biggest TV audiences ever. People loved it. You know, it's all very, very old-fashioned and fabulous, and people love it. And I, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I read, a, I read in The Express that they'd done a survey mm. of 2,300 people, and... Cutting down on pomp and circumstance was apparently the second most important thing to the British public after climate change. <laughs> so you know who they served. Mm, they were yeah. all in North London. Yeah, that's not a survey. That's I mean, not a that's, survey. That's a deliberately targeted... <laughs> yeah. The Express does that's a survey of 2,300 people. That's their entire circulation. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 2,000 people I'm going to stand up for the Express. Okay. I think there are... I thought you were going to say, gonna say I'm going to stand up for King Charles yeah. for a second. Well, I think it's an interesting one. What I'm keen to know is have they actually shortened the, the procession, the ceremony, the number of yeah, carriages. Yeah. Yeah. It's gone it down all. from four hours to one hour. Yep, shorten it, take down the numbers, not spend so much money, and he's just an idiot, or he's very <laughs> tight. I don't think it's that. I think he thinks that that reflects a kind of frugal image that will play well in the cost of living crisis. I mean, I get where he's coming from, but he's lost the plot because he doesn't understand what royalty is all about. The clue is in the world yeah. word also, majesty. It's, it's all very they should well. deliver maj majestic spectacles. Yeah. And it's all very well Me. saying, you know, it's a bit Rishi Sunak-esque, isn't it, to go, Me. but don't worry, we know how you feel because I've just <laughs> given my son 130,000 acres of Cornwall to do with what he likes. So, I mean, the idea that I this guy's going to somehow be, you know, down the old uh, supermarket getting buying two Maybe for it's one all clever his... spin. Maybe actually... They're just managing expectations. In fact, no one's going to count. In fact, there's 4,000 or 5,000 in the Abbey. Or is it Abbey or the St Paul's mm. Cathedral? And then maybe they'll still have a huge procession. But people will think, oh, he did well because he toned it down a bit. So but think how much longer it would have been. really fast so that yeah, it goes so quicker. I think it could be very clever spin, very right. clever managing our expectations. Is he going to be arriving in that car that he claims is driven on wine and cheese? No, no, no. <laughs> the, 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 the gold uh, royal stagecoach will still be involved. Oh, fine. Oh, good. That's what about fun. the electric Aston Martin? Well, you know. <laughs> and also, exactly also, here's right. a guy... Who's, well, here's a guy, it, Richard, so it's OK. Here's a guy that can get by after firing 100 people yeah. who worked for him. So he's probably presumably got still another hundred or so left to go. You know, I mean, Renee's exactly right. The royal family. Also, we also a... learned today, didn't we, that it looks as though Queen Camilla may not get the crown that she wants to get because, because of the offensive, the, the diamond. The offensive diamond. offensive diamond that apparently we stole from India yeah. back in the day when India was ruled by an eleven-year-old. I just apparently wanna... may have been uh, somewhat uh, misquoted when he said that he <laughs> wanted to give it to us, and we just went, "Yeah, thanks, we'll have that." And apparently, they want it back. So, I mean, I don't know where that's going to lead. I just want to put it on record that I'm never offended by diamonds. Are you not? No. OK, well, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> diamonds are a right. girl's best friend. Yeah. I mean, it, it is extraordinary, isn't it, that we've gone from the sort of, you know, the pomp and ceremony of the Queen's funeral, the, the mourning period and all of that, and we've just kind of gone back to normal now, haven't we? I mean... It didn't this, last more than a couple of days. No. We're a complete we're all, you go down, it lasts a bit longer than Liz Truss's reputation. <laughs> if you go down the Charles route, you end up with those uh, pointless, ludicrous bicycling royals in places like Denmark. And who needs that? And Holland. You know, no, Nobody needs these people riding around on bicycles, because getting we, on we the like train the to go pod, to work. You know, they yeah. happen to be royal. Royals I, should deliver ma majestic spectacles. If they can't do that, what's the point of them? Yeah, I, th no, I think it's a very clever piece of spin 
manage the expectations, and then, actually, quietly, they'll just make it bigger. Wow, everybody, with the pomp and ceremony. It'll be fantastic. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to stand up for him for a little have, bit are longer. Are you going to have a, a coronation party? Are you going to invite a lot of people to it? And over well, are you looking it? for an invite, Mike? It sounds <laughs> like to me. <laughs> I, may be, I may be in a <laughs> loose end. Actually, actually, well, one it's a really good idea. Why not? Yeah, I mean, the good thing is, as well, that they've listened to us, and we have, who have been saying, don't have a special public holiday, don't get another bank holiday, just do it the week, just do it on a Saturday. So we want to go to work, don't we? Mm. Well, I think people need to be working. You know. I think they should have the day off. Well, so you move, <laughs> move the Monday bank <laughs> holiday to the Friday. Yeah. They should have and then off. we can all have a complete bonanza. Yeah. yeah. Marvellous. Right. Make it a which, massive at yours. Which brings us to at your... mine. Yeah. Good for the good for the economy. <laughs> Shocking for my place, but there we are. <laughs> so who's your first nominee, well, Richard? Don't, you've nearly put me off my stride, actually, because thinking of, you know, cost, my plank of the week, without question, is the Chancellor. Yes. Mm. At the moment. It may not be by the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> because quasi Quateng, I mean, look, he's tried. But basically, <laughs> ever since he stood up in that mini budget, which turned out to be the biggest budget that completely blew everybody, it blew it everybody's minds. <laughs> and it's been a catastrophe. Sterling fell through the floor. It has recovered a bit. Mm. But it's hurting everybody because the price of mortgages has yeah. gone through the roof. And and then they U-turned, having said they wouldn't U-turn. Yeah. And and now they're sort of, and then he he kept said he wouldn't uh, wouldn't bring forward the real budget, yeah. even though we're exhausted from the mini Baxi budget. Yeah. He said he wouldn't bring it forward from the end of November, <laughs> and then he might do, and then he wouldn't, and then he Halloween. did. He brought it forward to the October the thirty first. My prediction. Halloween. Halloween. My prediction is things are so bad he'll have to bring it forward again. Yeah. Well, having said he that he wouldn't. Well, everything they say they're not going to do, they end up they doing. End up doing. Yeah. So, I mean, even as we speak, they're probably about to perform another U-turn because this morning, this very morning, there was another statement from them saying, we're not making any more U-turns. Well, I, 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 I think I bet you do. The next big U-turn, maybe she might U-turn on her appointment of him yes. as her Chancellor. Yes. I think that is a U-turn that could well be coming down the pipe because... And where is he now? Dying. Washington. Where is he now? Swanning yeah, I mean, around yeah. in America. We've got a, we've got a Thanks, national quasi. economic What's crisis. What's he doing there? He's, he's caused by, some conference. Right. Sorry, yeah, caused by him and, as you say, he's swanning around in Washington, sort of laughing. But you're being a bit unfair, Richard, aren't you? Because, I mean, the interest rates would have always gone up because of the American interest rate ah. being put up by the Fed, right? Just Wouldn't you they? wait until my second plank a bit later in the show okay. because uh, we'll be talking about that. Spoiler alert. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert. I agree with you on Quasi, but I would give him another thing that he's done wrong. You know, the markets, as you say, are in free fall. Nobody knows what the hell is going on. And surely he should be out there all day long calming people, talking them through, this is explaining what I say, why yeah. it's right. Where the hell? I know he's in Washington, but, you know, no, he should be out he, front he, and centre. You are so right. He should be out leading, almost with a sort of a daily press conference, yes, yes. saying the reason we're doing this is because, actually, you know, we've had a very low growth uh, environment. We've got to go for growth, and if we get more growth, then we can have more revenue. He needs a scientist to have to better public to this, And we're all he for needs, going He needs his own no, scientists. <laughs> you know, no, he should have his own scientists, yeah. like I'll Chris Whitty can stand there. You know. <laughs> saying, we know what so we're tr doing. Trust he, trust needs, uh, he needs me standing beside him, <laughs> convincing <laughs> people Somebody, that all will be well. Trust and Quartet, I mean, are subnormal when it comes to communication. I mean, this is what's gone wrong here. They didn't explain why they were doing it. They just imposed it on a shocked nation, and still they're not really explaining it enough there's your problem and I'll tell you the kind of politician you want to be very very beware of uh, and that's those politicians that all other politicians say he's brilliant He's a genius. He's so intelligent. Uh, you know, as in quasi quartet. Yeah. Remember Vince Cable when everyone said, this man understands the economy more than anyone else. No, he wasn't. He was just A-N other politician. <laughs> and quasi quartet uh, is A-N other politician who may be actually worse than most other politicians. Well, because he's, as you say, he's completely failed to, to take the markets with him, to take their own party with him, and to take the people with him. Yeah. Because and, and the opportunity is there. What he's failed to say is actually... We need to cut out the massive amount of wasteful government spending. That's exactly. I think and, it's, and it's the spending. It's not balanced, yeah. is it? Because it didn't cost. The, so we've got these tax cuts, which I'm all in favour. I think tax cuts are brilliant, and people need more of their own money in their own pockets. But actually, where is the money coming from? It's going to be my generation that's paying back back all of this money in, I'll in stop tax money. Yeah. 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 Thanks very much. No one realise we don't care about your generation. Uh, uh, yeah. Also, my generation's already paid for your generation. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Poor this children. Is like a cycle that's one thing I can't stand. The young person going, my generation. Yeah. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs>
I'll I'm never be able to buy a house no, now. This generation was so bad being <laughs> us. Oh, my God. OK, it's all the snowflakes. Listen, we Reem, are I'm going to stand up. I'm going to stand up for you, Reem. I was expecting you to defend the government a bit more, though, to be honest, because, I mean, you're supposed to be a card-carrying member of the Conservative Party. I am, yeah. You can yes. understand Tice over here having a go, because mm. it's in his interest, obviously, to make them fall <laughs> <and> <laughs> to collapse make the government under their own, the weight of their own <laughs> yeah. ignominy. But, but, but give us some, well, something good to think about. Well, it's because I'm, I'm a principled libertarian. I think that I, wa I want to see taxes being cut, but I also want spending to be cut. And actually, this money is coming from nowhere. It's coming from government <laughs> borrowing. And that's why the markets were so volatile. Yeah, and we thought Absolutely it was coming, right. of course, from uh, the government cuts, but uh, no, no, the, no cuts. Absolutely that's what, what, that's not what we're spending. Us. That must so mean they're not much. wasting any money at all. Whereas all yeah. we all know, whenever you see government spending any money or local authorities spending yeah. money, you know you could have done it cheaper. You know much of it is just wasted. And, and the cool private companies could have done it much more cheaply than the government could have. Well, you say that, but then we've got private companies like Serco, uh, yeah. who have now run, you know, Migrants Inc, or whatever it's called, yeah. uh, for so much yeah. money. Uh, they're making literally billions and billions Capital. of pounds a year. And that's all our money as well. So I've now got a bit fed up with these arguments that private companies would do it better. Some might, but not all of them. Well, they've got to be properly supervised, yeah. and they mustn't have a vested interest. Mm. And in some of these situations like that, actually... They've got a vested interest in this thing continuing for as long what do you as mean possible. By supervised? Do you Life mean vested interests. That's what they're wearing. A combination of regulation and a decent boss, like the client, i.e., us, the taxpayer, the government, mm. saying that's good value, that's not good value, get it done on time, on budget, otherwise you get penalised. Yeah, or well, you get fired. Actually. Or you, you get, get fired. Yeah. Lose the contract altogether. That's what they should be doing. Anyway, listen. Uh, coming up next, we're going to be nominating somebody that almost reminds me a little bit of Jimmy Cranky. I think we know who we're talking about. Yeah, I think we, no, do. we, come do. On, we do. It's all on. Take a bet. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. I'm Mike Graham. This is, of course, Talk TV. Now, uh, we've had already some pretty good nominees and we don't know yet who's going to win. I'm going to decide right at the end, of course, exactly who has been the biggest Plank of the Week. But right now, Reem Ibrahim has got the next one. Reem, who have you got for us? I'm nominating the one and only Scottish clown, Nicola Sturgeon. Absolutely right. <laughs> um, you know, she's continuously, time and time again, seems to think that independence will solve every single problem that you've ever had in your entire life. So, cost of living crisis, you know, you can't afford your energy bills, you've eaten one too many cream cakes and you've, you know, gone off your diet plan. Independence will solve everything. <laughs> so, I, I think it's just this, you know, ridiculous notion that, you know, we're going to spend so much money and, you know, that this taxpayer money that we're spending and trying to get through this, um, through to the UK Court of Justice. I think it's ridiculous of spending so much money on this. And independence does not solve anything. You know, it does not solve, you know, it's not a quick fix for all of your difficulties in Scotland. And actually, when we're thinking about the, sort of the Scottish issue as well, um, I think that we, we should support, be supporting the union. Also, when looking at the taxpayer money, Scottish people, um, Scottish taxpayer money is less than how much the Scottish government spend. Mm. So, you know, it's just this complete bizarre idea. She sort of said at, um, at the SNP conference the other day, we are the independence generation. No, you're not. We've, they've already voted against yeah. it. So. Well, that's the thing. I mean, uh, and also not as many people as she thinks actually want independence, because yeah. even though the SNP have got a pretty big um, share of the vote up there, not everybody who votes for the SNP actually wants independence. Do you think she's deliberately winding us all up so that more and more people in England and Wales say, do you know what, I've had enough of their whinging yeah. and whining and yeah. beating. Just go. Mm. Just go. Yeah. Yeah. It's but almost like it's a deliberate... No-one could be... No one could behave like she yeah. behaves. Why can't we have an independence vote in England yes. to be independent of Scotland? <laughs> I mean, one of the problems that uh, independence was Wales solved Island. for uh, Nicola Sturgeon, fourth prize in the Elton John lookalike contest, uh, <laughs> w w was would be, good, would be she'd no longer have to work out what to do with the £12 billion a year we give Scotland in subsidies. Exactly. So she, they'd be deprived of that. Uh, and uh, another thing, she, she won't, she'd have to work out how to uh, have a currency, what's she going to do about the BBC, the NHS. Mm -hmm. uh, as I say, if she ends up with British HMRC. currency, then that is the worst kind of serfdom. Like Panama has to use American dollars, and that makes it a complete vassal state. So as things stand, if there was an independence referendum and Scotland voted for independence, which, by the way, I'm all for. If that's what the majority of people want, they should have it. I'm, I'm a Democrat. Okay. But if that did happen, Scotland would be plunged into a world of difficulty, and she knows it. Her worst nightmare is being granted what she yes. shouts about. 
about. Exactly. She does not That's want exactly a referendum. Right. The SN she might lose. The SNP have been about that ever since their yeah. inception. Alex Salmond was brilliant. Uh, asking for things for Westminster that he couldn't get. So he yeah. could go, look, they won't give yeah, us exactly. it. Yeah. And that's yeah. why but they're that's terrible. Why Liz but, just say but I thought you were going to nominate her because she said she detested the Tories and everything they stood for, to which I said, well, I wish you could tell us what they stand for because <laughs> I don't actually know what they stand <laughs> for. Well, what, what, what does Nicola Sturgeon stand for other than independence? I mean, we've got the sort of the green policy and the sort of social liberalism, mm. but other than independence, she th seems to think that independence will literally solve every single issue that Scottish people have. Yeah. It is a really odd situation, though, isn't it, when we have the leader of a country using language like, I detest mm. the Tories. Mm. I mean, it's really bizarre. When, she, when she's always trying to sort of claim that she's the progressive. Yeah. yeah. She's the kind, kind. compassionate one. Well, it's I don't mind that saying that. If, what, if she detests Tories, she should be able to say I don't see a problem. I don't but think it's for hypocrisy she, of it. She also assumes immediate admission to the EU for Scotland. Which won't happen. They go mm. independent. The EU has got no interest <laughs> in <the last> thing <laughs> of joining whatsoever. So they'll just be cast out. Uh, they'll be stuck with our currency, which, as I say, is a kind of serfdom, uh, a mess of an economy, uh, no currency, no NHS, Although, no BBC. It's a disaster. Maybe, no, no, hang on, no it. NHS, no BBC. I think you might be onto something there because, uh, you <laughs> yeah. know, they don't Which work very well. No BBC. BBC. I'm going to move to Scotland. Scotland. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Now, listen. Bomb. Now, listen, we've had enough of Scotland. We've had enough of that. We're going to bring things back down to London because yesterday uh, and most of this week, it's been either Just Stop Oil or Insulate Britain. So I'm going to nominate for my first nomination. This week, it's Insulate Britain. It could have been Just Stop Oil, but it happens to be Insulate Britain. They tried to stop Liz Truss from getting into Parliament. Uh, they couldn't even manage to do that. So that's how useless they are. Uh, but they've got a leader, a woman called Tracy somebody or other, um, who appeared on Julie Hartley Brewer's show and said that she was disabled and unable to work. And there she was, uh, you know, prancing around down. <laughs> at this uh, demonstration oh uh, where God. people were gluing themselves to the road, shouting and bawling about how terrible everything was and that uh, death was being brought upon the nation by this government. And, uh, you know, I put it to her that she should be working and she then told me she'd lost her job, changed the story. Yeah. So it turned out that it wasn't because she couldn't work. It was basically because she just didn't want to work and she's on benefits. And most of these people are. But it always happens, doesn't it? Well, during It always happens during kind of uh, half term. You know, so they're either <laughs> students or they're retired yeah, or they're unemployed yeah. uh, or they're lecturers, these people. I'll tell you, you and they are getting to be such a pain in the neck. And I'm actually slightly worried that somebody will do some harm to yes. someone because the road users of this of this city and of the country mm. are getting more and more fed up with them and more and more of them are getting dragged away. Well, on the days, and, and, of, days of these demonstrations the in central London, uh, you should see the trains from Tunbridge Wells absolutely packed yeah. with people who get out of their flash houses onto the train and then they go, yeah. and just stop oil. But you do know, you know I mean, what, what I've learned class. as well? this week, and you, you've nominated a TFL already for this, but apparently the police will only operate and move these people if various agencies, including TFL, regard the disruption as serious well, enough yes. to, to yeah. cause a problem. It's a police yeah. decision. So, police no, the, no, the police... It is a police no, the, no, but the police do it in conjunction yeah, but, but with all of these other and, and I've checked the law. It's a complete cop-out. Yeah, oh, it is. So Mark oh, Rowley is completely wrong. Hang yeah. on a second. It's, Hello. Got to wait. Wait, but, but, <laughs> but, you know, this is a complete cop-out. It is. They are, they are perfectly entitled to remove them. They are breaking yeah. the law on multiple different laws. Yeah. And I think the police need, need to get their act together. Otherwise, the, the public will say, if you're not going to get these people out of the way, we will. We will. Yes. Yeah. And, well, that, and that's already to started happening. the highway, are you? Correct. So that's the law. It's as simple as that. And there isn't a clause in that law that says you can obstruct the highway for two hours. No, so. it's absolute nonsense. And, of course, the police and the judicial system, though, have mm. been on the side of these people. They say, oh, well, they are trying to save the planet. Well, they're not trying to save the no. planet. They're just a nuisance, frankly. They're like anarchists. They're like the green and they common are. women. And the great thing is, right, whenever you talk to any of these people, they go, you'd have said the same about the suffragettes. Well, one, I wouldn't have said the same about the suffragettes. But two, there isn't anybody since then that they can say actually had success. I was, I was talking to one of these characters the other day. He said, oh, but it's proof that, you know, uh, this kind of direct action works. I said, where? When did it ever work? The Green and Common Women, do you remember them? I mean, they were outside the Green and Common Air Base for Seriously? years, decades, mm. without washing, once. <laughs> and they still didn't manage to get what they wanted, which was to rid the world of nuclear weapons, right? They were but intensely middle class. I think old uh, Vladimir Putin still got one or two of them. <laughs> Probably so, but this is the irony with, with these sort of insulate Britain, just up oil types, is that they complain about the cost of energy, and then yet they don't want to increase the supply of energy. They don't want more energy in this country, which will bring down bills. I think it's sort of this champagne sort of madness, socialist sort of idea that yeah. says, I can come from my, you know, my North London house, and I could come down and you know with my plaque and say just stop oil. But actually, I don't care if people can heat their homes. Well, also the other thing is, is the comparison with suffragettes, as you rightly say, is completely wrong because with the suffragettes, it was very clear there was no. 
no black, no grey, no. women could not vote. Right. End. Climate change, mm. whether or not it's down to man, is not proven beyond doubt. No. It's somebody's no. view. It's some, there's also no, no evidence at all to suggest that if we were to stop oil or to stop making oil... It wouldn't oil, make any difference. Exactly. It wouldn't make any difference at all. And the reality is the climate's changed for millions yeah. of years. Yeah. Before we had man-made CO2 and the climate will always change exactly. for millions of years. And there's no it's a complete nonsense. There's no evidence that greenhouse gases cause climate Absolutely. change. No, I, I wonder what, whether at that, that point that, you realise... Uh, I wonder whether that lady on Judy yeah. yeah. Maybe she was one of the Green and Common protesters 40 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, yeah, she, she they she do might, the rounds yeah. this lot. But it's literally, these policies she, make she people might, poorer. She might well have said that, of course. There are plenty of people that will tell you the opposite, of course. Yeah, yeah. Plenty but, of scientists. But it's a debate. Because people believe that, in fact, climate change is a thing and that we're causing it. But let's move on. Let's talk about your next nominee. Mr. Kevin yeah, well, it's all been preempted, hasn't it? Because uh, mine is uh, Sir Mark Rowley, the uh, leader of the Met Police, the chief, the new chief constable of the Met Police, uh, for his interpretation of the situation when it comes to these Just Stop Oil and Insulate Britain demonstrators. It is down to the police that he says that the reason that they're allowed to sit on roads and the police don't move them uh, is because these demonstrators so far have not caused enough disruption. Tell that to the fire engine that was trying to get through mm. yesterday. Tell that to the ambulance with the sick person in the back. Tell that, tell that to the driver with the sick baby. Mm. This is a police interpretation. They're saying, oh, well, if it's just a couple of hours in Westminster, that's not enough disruption. Well, I say it is, and I say <laughs> this is an obvious example of the police showing favouritism towards climate change protesters, prioritising the rights of the protesters over the rights of decent and honest yeah. motorists just trying to go about their business. And you're right, Richard, I did actually look this up. Any police constable, any police officer has the right to remove from the road anyone who is obstructing mm. the King's Highway, end of. Yeah. Unless they... Did, of course, they do actually have the right to demonstrate, and you can block a road uh, in, in, in pursuit of a protest, uh, but it's a question of how the police interpret that, and I suggest to Sir Mark Rowley, like every other police chief, start trying to but, think what mm. ordinary people think. They've had enough of this, yeah. and they'd like the police to clear these roads. He doesn't know his own law, because there's a new act that has come in this year, the Police Crime Sentencing Act, that actually says you cannot obstruct someone else's right to go about their daily business. Mm. That is what they are doing. Mm. So he needs to actually learn the law that he's supposed to uphold. Well, the other the thing the about these police. I mean, they were sitting down outside Parliament yesterday. Now, obviously, uh, they look a bit useless and they don't really appear to be much of a threat. They just sit there until somebody moves and they go back and sit down again. But what, for example, if they were um, with malice or forethought? What if they were? What if one was wearing a suicide vest? You can let them just sit there? You know, what would you do then? You don't know what they've got with them. They, they could have things... I mean, we know that there are now these groups that let down people's tyres. They mm. could have, you know, yeah. knives that they might mm. use to punch, puncture it could be violent. Uh, people's... Yeah, they could be. So you can't just treat them as some kind of special class of people well, I, who can do whatever note, they like. I actually wonder if all of these different groups... There's so many now, Just Stop Oil, Insulate Britain, Just Stop Private Jets, yeah. the milk, Let Down milk the SUV, the Milk Pouring Brigade. I wonder if they're all going to join together and get themselves an acronym in, like, LGBTQ said whatever mm. it is, but a different one, obviously. Yeah. And then they'll be treated with even mm. bigger kid gloves yes. by the police. Invite them into the Equality Act Terrifying. as a protected characteristic if you're a protester. <laughs> they'll become a whole new gender in their own right. Exactly. <laughs> when, when are these top cops, these police chiefs, going to understand what it is that people want from them? Uh, and what we want is for you to unblock the road, Sir Mark. Mm. I've got to get somewhere. I've got someone sick in my car. You know, don't you prioritise their rights over my rights? Yeah. Why don't there's these also, top cops get this? There's another it's pretty point, obvious. There's another point that was raised uh, on, uh, for me this week with uh, the fact that all the police have to be <coughs> looking after these characters. There's crimes being committed yes. in London all over the place. There was, a group, there was a group of, of, of kids on bikes in Park Lane one day this week, just robbing people at will, ripping watches off their arms, taking their phones and cycling off. No Two, cops to be seen, but don't worry, because they're, yeah. they're all down watching these idiots. 200 of them? Yeah. That's how many police were needed at these protests. It's average, because when I saw, came across them on Horse Free Road mm. a couple of weeks ago, and yeah. I did a quick hit for you on your yes. show, and there were, there were about uh, 15 to 20 of these protesters sitting in the road, and there were 150 police, dozens of police Looking at them. Basically, Looking at them. just waiting. <laughs> You know, and you just think, this is absurd. Do your damn Do job. Do your job, move them Get out of the way. Get rid of them. I know. Keep a few cops, and then spread the police back, actually preventing crime, 
up and down the... You the know, they will have pop-up wellness areas for them soon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <good. I'm> sorry. <laughs> you can yeah, put yeah, some boxing that. gloves in there and we can all have a good do go. The anyway, while uh, that's they another protect, story. Yeah. Only joking, of course. Uh, coming up next, we're going to be talking about a Tory MP who's worth over £100 million. Well, he used to be before the crash. This is Plank of the Week. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Plank of the Week. We are well into the show now. We've had plenty of nominations, quite a lot of them, focusing, of course, uh, on the government, quite rightly, not just this government, uh, but also uh, some other governments as well. Now, uh, Dr Renee, it's time for your next nomination. Yes. Who's it going to be? So I'm going to go with somebody who wants to be part of a future government. Yes. And that is Eddie Izzard. Mm. And, you know, I'm just sitting back and watching this car crash of men who decide that they can wear a dress and be a woman. I mean, they don't look like women and they still have the tackle of men, but, <laughs> you know, Eddie wants to be called a woman yeah. at the moment. Mm. Sometimes he feels all boy, sometimes all girl. And he girl. still plays as a, parts as, in movies as a man, doesn't yep. he? Yeah, and he said that at the moment he's in girl mode. Is he? Now, what's really irritating me about this is the Labour Party in Sheffield really do seem to be taking him under their wing and there is a lot of suggestion that he may stand as their next MP, but as a woman. And there's so much wrong with that. Firstly, that's taken a place from a woman who could stand as that MP, mm. a proper, real woman, one that can have babies, yeah. because she has a uterus. Controversial. A real I woman. I know, a real woman. <laughs> um, and also, it's completely negating women again. And I actually think it's deeply misogynistic. Mm. I really do. Mm. You know, Eddie had some hustings recently that um, somebody filmed and went to. He used the ladies' toilets. He's written about doing that when he was much younger and teenage girls chasing him out because they didn't want a man in their space. Understandably. And it is this erasing of women's spaces and women's rights. And frankly, in this debate, the most important person people are are women, yeah. real women. Yeah. They're not the men who want to be women and vice versa. And I'm sorry if that's controversial. No, but you as a woman, be sorry. I what's have wrong... to be able to say that. Of course. And what's wrong with if you want to dress up as a woman, that's fine. But if you're not a woman, why don't you just use the men's toilets? Yes. Nobody's absolutely. going to give you a hard time for being dressed as a woman in this day and age in a men's toilet. I know. And the other well, thing I want to put out there that nobody ever seems to say is that a man, present company accepted, can never, ever identify as a woman because they have no idea mm. what, it's like what it is to be a woman. You've ruined my plans. <laughs> 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 I mean, Sorry, the, the thing is, it's sexist, isn't it? The, yes. What, what, you, you are, women are basically referred to as people with cervixes, people who get, birthing get pregnant, persons. birthing persons, Chest feeders. people who get pregnant, people who menstruate, all that. You never hear men referred to as people with testicles, do no. you? No, opposite. Uh, it's, it's so you say that, yeah. I once saw somebody on a breakfast programme on the BBC God knows why I was watching that. Um, oh, it must have been at a loose end. Like. I, don't know. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't feeling well. Um, and I couldn't get to sleep, maybe. Anyway, uh, there was a doctor on there who actually was talking about prostate cancer and he was talking about people with prostates. Oh, my God. I'm going, sorry? Just... People with prostates? And this is actually dangerous. Yeah. It's potentially dangerous because if you start as a health you know, organisation saying to people, please come for your smear if you have a cervix. Mm. Yeah. Some women won't know they have a cervix. Yeah. They know they're a woman yeah. and they have to go for this test, but they may not know that they have a cervix. So you're actually putting at people of danger of not being tested mm. for things that can be treated. And I had a Volvo oh, once, is that... Uh, did you? It's very yeah. close. Yeah, not it's far away. Quite, yeah. Yeah. The, the, quite a good insanity, car. The insanity of, of, of uh, everyone who goes to the NHS to be uh, tested, uh, for to, to have an X-ray, uh, because obviously if you're a w woman and you're pregnant, that can be bad for your unborn child. Uh, so due to the woke NHS, everyone who goes for an X-ray has to be asked if they're pregnant. So you've got these kind of builders, 50-year-old <laughs> builders with beard guts and beards, saying, are you pregnant? Well, you know, it seems more unlikely. Like, more likely to punch the doctor. Just, you know, can we just end this utter insanity? It's madness. Why is it gripping this entire country? It's madness and it's dangerous, isn't it? I mean, we're not protecting women's spaces. I, I think about Wait, my what? younger sister, who's only eight years old. If I, you know, had to t take her to the bathroom and we saw a grown man, she exactly. would be so scared. Exactly. Yeah. I actually feel that we're always going back to the times when lesbian women were fighting for their rights and their private spaces. 
and they were being attacked by mm. men and being told all they needed, you know, was to spend a night with a man and yeah. then they'd be mm. cured. I actually thought that we're regressing <laughs> and we're going back to those times. Yeah. And now lesbian women are being, are being told that if, if, if you don't sleep with, um, yes. with these trans women, then you're not a real lesbian. You're, you're, you're trans kicked out of the LGBT yeah. club. So I think it's just... And these it's... stupid shops uh, like Marks and Spencers, yes. you know, who won't listen to their customers mm. because they're so desperate to be woke. So they're allowing great big blokes to invade the changing rooms of women you know and that we've seen these videos of women crying <laughs> saying the two blokes just burst in and well, I'm so, you know Marx like, I'm sorry but we yeah. have to be woke I never mind you mm -hmm. the customer yeah. we have it, to be woke didn't Primark inclusive. go back on it they didn't they? did yeah. again I, I it's, insanity. Yeah. I think it's if we, insanity if we look at Eddie Azard I hope Labour do it I hope they put him up so that they can just show the world how ridiculous yeah. they have become you know they've shown us their racism let's let's look at your misogyny yeah. as well and this is the kind of thing that's going to help them uh, not to win in mm. an election situation because and you I know, don't think the average working man in Sheffield is I really agree. interested. I think it'd be, be very interesting that if actually he uh, is appointed as the Labour candidate, I suspect that he might lose. Yes, he might Even well do. Even his deposit. And yes. might, you know, I think it is a very safe a, seat, though, isn't it? Well, nevertheless, if I think that happens, I think, that I think, he'll I think make me laugh for the first time in his career. I think, <laughs> I think the, <laughs> the good people in Sheffield, they may actually make a real point because I think this is a. It's a sort of metropolitan, it is. Westminster-based thing. It's yeah. not a thing outside no. the M25. It's really not. I think, um, I think people think it's just We are eating nuts. into your yes. next nomination, however. Mr. Well, it's very simple so, with my nomination uh, with because very straight up this down, guy please. is the Governor of the Bank of England. His name is Andrew Bailey, mm. and he had two simple jobs as the Governor. One is to ensure price stability, mm -hmm. to control inflation. Failed. <laughs> and the second one he had to do was to ensure, um, by law, financial stability. Mm. Well, we've had the pound collapsing. We've had basically the Bank of England having to wade in to the bond market to buy bonds to protect the pension industry because he didn't pr uh, protect the financial stability. In fact, he did it in order to because there was a serious risk of market instability, market failure. So failed on his second task. And then what does he do in order to sort of try and recover from this? He goes to Washington with <laughs> my previous guy, Quasi Quasi. They're like the yeah. Chuckle Brothers. Yeah. They are. Silly me, oh silly you, oh dear, oh yeah, dear. Yeah. I mean, it's I mean, just unbelievable. Is there a chance if they're both out of the country that the markets could actually recover <laughs> and, and, and stabilise and sort themselves out? Actually, yeah. But the third thing this bloke did, I mean, imagine if you're desperate to achieve something, you're desperate to, to sell your property, the last thing you do is say, I've got to sell it by Friday. Yes. Otherwise, because anyone buying is going to lower their price because mm. they know you're desperate. Yeah. And what does he do? When the markets are completely in turmoil, he says, I'm going to stop buying bonds. This has all got to be finished by Friday. So surprise, surprise, the market, market is, responds, it's a one-way yeah. trade. The market is just pushing, pushing, pushing. And guess I mean, what? He's not going to stop by Friday because he can't. He's and so it'll be not. another U-turn. Yeah. Yeah. You guarantee it. I mean, you but can't he... expect much from this guy. This is a guy who couldn't remember how much he was getting paid. Do you remember when he was in front of a select <laughs> committee and they said, how much money are you actually on? Yeah. And he didn't know. Yeah, for so his information, it's £575,000 yeah. a year. It was like 500000 and change. But, see, but what like he said about the Friday thing, he basically said, well, you know, we've been helping the markets uh, for a while uh, and the pensions have all been uh, in trouble. He said, but after Friday, they're on their own. I mean, yeah, that's great. not your great. job, mate. Your job is actually to try to help protect no. pensions. <laughs> his job is to ensure financial stability. And by saying that it's going to finish on Friday yeah. and then it'll be unstable yeah, thereafter, he's, yeah. he's actually going Chaos. to increase the instability. I mean, this guy, the issue is that in normal times, the Chancellor would have fired him. Yeah. But given that the Chancellor himself is yeah. worried about him... His own, I don't think job, his own yeah. job. I don't think he can fire, fire him now, can he? No, he, now... I don't think he can, because it would just create more market instability mm. in the time when we're all Don't forget the Bank of England was really tardy and slow in finally accepting it would have to raise yeah. interest rates. So, so a year ago, they should have been doing this, and they, they declined because they wanted to keep up this protectionist high-tax system which kept interest rates low and everybody's mortgage was tickety-boo. Mm. Uh, so they... they should have been braver a year ago, then we might not be in quite the mess we're in now. You're right, Bailey is, is a disaster. Mind you, it'd be pretty funny for Quasi Quartang to fire anyone. 
for financial <laughs> incompetence, wouldn't it? I mean, I mean after all, his own work, um, isn't we've it? got to move on. Uh, Reem, who's your next one? Yeah, so my last nomination is Jacob Rees Mogg. So mm. it's actually quite funny when I when I first chose Jacob Rees Mogg, he was it was already for something. So um, the 15 million pounds on the energy bill, uh, sorry, on the energy advert that he, wa he wants to put forward, this mm. sort of crazy nanny state stuff. I mean, sorry, Kevin, did you know that you have to turn your radiator on in, in an it's empty room? Pathetic. Did you know that? From him of all people. <laughs> no, I know it's crazy because I, I sort of expected him to be the sort of free market maverick, understand that, you know, people, the British people understand, you know, they're paying their energy bills, they understand what they're doing, but no, he seems to think that the government needs to tell them what they can and cannot do with their energy. But, but he, is, he is the king of nannies, oh. after yeah. all. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> he does like a nanny state. He does he like does. a nanny. As long as he's got his own nanny. I think he that's does. The and, thing, then, and then now he's sort of said that actually, you know, the, the, the mini budget has nothing to what do is... with, the, with the volatility of the market. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just crazy. He's representative of so many Tories, so Liz Truss, uh, I liked her for this when she said, no, no, well, you know, we're not a nanny state. We don't tell people how to live. People can work out how to turn their own radiators down in hard times. She's absolutely right. So Jacob Rees-Mogg, a, a rare breach uh, of libertarianism mm. on his part, he, uh, wants to protect us all and treat us like children. And then loads and loads of Tory MPs saying, this is outrageous, we've got to get that campaign back. They've forgotten what they are. Mm. They're supposed to be conservative, They're small government. Leave us, but leave us alone, we're Who's adults. That? 15 million quid. Yeah, why I mean, this is real that? money. Yeah. It's real quid. And if they're, what? if they're that profligate, over 15 million quid, yes. it highlights yeah. that they are so wasteful mm. of our cash all over the government, all over the local authority spending. If they think 15 million quid is just loose change down the yeah. back of the sofa. Well, they, well I think this is where government has gone so used to, so through the, throughout the COVID pandemic and through yeah. lockdowns, government has gone so used to telling us what to do with their lives, hands, face, space. I, think, I remember uh, Matt Hancock told us not to engage in casual sex, telling us exactly how uh, to live our lives. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, exactly he didn't follow it himself. Either, no. there, was, there was nothing casual about <laughs> the, what he was up to. <laughs> the ultimate you hypocrite. Yeah. The thing is, he was spent, doing it professionally. He was. They spent more than 400 million on advertising over COVID. Yeah. You know, the UK government went from the 10th biggest advertiser to the first. So I think they've got into this mm, habit yeah, now. Right. You know, we told them well, what they to do. They love telling us on. what Let to do. Yeah. What about the sinister nature of the department that was in charge of COVID advertising? They were actually called the nudge department. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. To nudge people nudge unit, into yeah. doing what mm. the government wants. It's behavioural uh, accident. And that syndrome hopeless. continues Well, I'm not going to nudge you into doing what I want you to do. I'm just going to tell you not to do it. Because uh, that's how it works here on Plank of the Week. Coming up, we're going to be asking the question, is the NHS really <laughs> at breaking point? Honestly, for heaven's sake. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. We're getting very near the point at which I will choose the winner uh, of this fabulous trophy that we have here uh, in the studios. And uh, it won't be too surprising for you to find out that there's plenty of competition today. Uh, we've got the final nomination and it comes from me. And uh, I'm going to tell you one thing and one thing only. It is that time of the year uh, when somebody and some organisations say exactly the same thing as they said last year and the year before that. In fact, you can take it back about 25 years and my nomination uh, is the British Medical Association, the BMA. This is an organisation well known to Dr. Renee mm -hmm. Hunderkamp. I think you've told me you're not actually in it. I left um, when they... Because they are basically a union for doctors. Uh, these are the people who, when the NHS was suggested as an idea, the national health system, uh, they were against it. They didn't fancy it at all. They thought it was a really, really bad idea. So that tells you all you need to know about <laughs> these characters, right? But they came out this week and said the NHS is at breaking point. <laughs> To which I said, well, now you know it's October. Because <laughs> they say every single every year. Single year. Oh, the NHS gosh. has been at breaking point for as long as I can remember. Um, every single year you can go back and find front pages, particularly the Daily Mirror, you know, 24 hours to save the NHS we had from Miliband. We had sort of, you know, the NHS is in crisis. The NHS can't do anything. Today, we find out that uh, waiting times, um, uh, the number of people waiting now for a first operation or a first appointment with the NHS uh, is now 7 million. And it's gone up 200,000 since a month ago. So it's now going up at the rate of 200,000 a month. And they say... It's not the um, whole story. No, it's not. They say that apparently the reason for the waiting list elongating is nothing to do with the fact that um, the NHS 
is it's underfunded. <laughs> Nothing to do with the fact that it's useless, as you say. It has everything to do with the fact that they can't get people out of hospital, even though they should be releasing them. So there's no space in the beds. They haven't got enough doctors because, for some reason, uh, the doctors are all working, you know, in other places. They haven't got enough staff. Says the doctor uh, sitting on yeah. the sofa. Yeah, well, exactly right. I mean, there is some <laughs> irony there. But last time you were here, though, you were off to do some and surgery. I am today. You can't see a GP. You know, they'd really rather in the NHS that you didn't get ill. They'd really rather run the hospitals more like businesses mm. so that you don't actually ever have to go there. And also, we heard today that actually they're running out of blood. Yeah. So they're having to cancel operations because they've got blood shortages, because uh, they the haven't main... got the staff yes. to take the, don the donations yes. of blood. So it's, it's everywhere. It's yeah. all over. It's, it's absolutely true. But you're so right. It's at the beginning of every winter. Yeah. And you get the same BBC headline. Uh, you know, sort of winter crisis, yeah. worst ever. Right. And the, the British just, Militant Association. The, British. Uh, the, the other <laughs> announcement you always get at this time of year is poor nurses are having to go to food banks. Mm. It's like you can mm. set your watch by this mm. stuff. Mm. Uh, it happens every single year. Uh, the problem with the NHS, uh, they say, oh, we need more funding to pay doctors and nurses. Mm. No, no. Okay. We all know what well, the, from the NHS yeah. needs to be properly organised. Well, properly run. To, and why can it not be properly run? So, so let's get pounds. Dr Renee's view just, on this, because you're in it. Yeah, I'm in it, and there's plenty of money. There's, they don't need more money. What they need, billion a year. Yeah, yeah. They, they need, actually now, to almost strip it back to nothing, decide what the offering will be, um, and actually spend the money in the right places, on the right people, and get staff in, so that you don't have 48% of your, your money going to non-clinical yeah. staff. Let's give it to doctors and nurses. Mm. I know that we have a problem in training those. Let's lift the training mm. cap. Let's actually look at it as a business and actually buy our pharmaceuticals, let's say our paracetamol from 10 people, not 800, mm. so that we're paying through those. Let's use the power of the NHS to buy properly and let's actually sort the care system out. And I do think that competitive tendering has mm. destroyed the care system. And then when they threatened them all with a vaccine that they didn't want, 40,000 left. Mm. So that's why we've got 13,000 people sitting in hospital, unable to go back into the community. Mm. And this is the moral that, panic, yeah. isn't it? Because whenever we talk about NHS reform, people will point fingers and say, you're evil, you want people to die, you don't want them to be able to receive healthcare. <coughs> but actually, I think we're letting down the patients, yeah. we're letting down taxpayers. Okay. You know, we're spending these billions and billions of pounds and we're just not getting the service yeah. that, that we need. Politicians are scared to we're address really it. And, uh, the, the NHS has got to address this question. It really Why are nurses getting £29,000 a year when social media managers uh, who post tweets yeah. are getting £40,000? i am going to stop you right there because we're really out of time and I've been told I have to pick the winner. Now, I've just realised there's a flaw in the system here because I'm now <laughs> picking the, my own winners, right? So it'd be uh, completely disingenuous of me to pick my own winner. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. But what I am going to do uh, is I'm going to award this week's winner to Mr Richard Tice because I think both of your nominations were great. I'm going to go, rather than with Quasi Quarteng, I'm going to go with Andrew Bailey, the happy plus head <laughs> of the Bank of England. He doesn't seem to know what he's doing. Can't do anything Plus, right. Be Can't get anything right. <laughs> I'm going to say thank you very much indeed. Kevin O'Sullivan, Dr Renee Hunderkamp, uh, of course, uh, it's Reem Ibrahim and Dr... Doctor? Doctor? <laughs> Dr Richard Tice. <laughs> Dr Richard Tice, Doctor of Economics. Why not? This is Plank of the Week. I'm Mike Graham. We'll see you next time. Oh. <laughs>